Welcome to EIS Services Orientation. The EIS contract for telecommunications and IT services offers a wide variety of services designed to meet your agency's needs now and for many years into the future. The following materials focus on many of the services available and offer you ideas on how to better understand what is relevant to your requirements. In this section, we provide an overview of some of the data services available under EIS and discuss the features and pricing structure associated with the services. Here we provide an overview of the virtual private network service available under EIS and discuss the features and pricing structure associated with this service. Under the network's contract, this service was called NBIP-VPNS. It is the predominant transport solution used today by agencies. In fiscal year 2016, customers on the network's contract purchased $874 million in VPNS. It can be used with any of the access arrangement available on EIS, for example, wireline, wireless satellite, fiber, cable, or ethernet. Bandwidth speeds for VPNS under EIS range from 64 kilobytes per second up to 40 gigabytes per second based on the port type. A VPN or virtual private network is a network that can extend an agency's private network. For example, using VPN services, a remote user working from home can use a VPN encrypted connection to securely access the agency's headquarters internal private network or a business partner's location may securely connect to an agency's extranet with VPNS. VPNS can be used to connect geographically separated offices of an agency, creating one cohesive private network. VPNS enables users to send and receive encrypted data across shared or public networks, as if their computing devices were directly connected to the private network. VPN connections provide a network of private communications paths that establish a logically private network, enabling authorized users to securely access agency resources via an extranet, and allowing remote users to securely access their files. VPNs can be either remote access or site-to-site. -site. Encryption and authentication are key components of a VPN. Encryption works by having the data sent from one computer, for example, a remote user's computer or device, encrypted via encryption software so that only the computer it is sending to, such as an agency's VPN server, can decrypt the data. Authentication controls access. A user's identity is often established via password protection or token-based security. This creates a secure VPN tunnel across the public network. Data may be sent in a variety of encrypted protocol standards, such as Secure Sockets Layer, SSL, Transport Layer Security, TSL, Multi-Protocol Label Switching, MPLS, or Internet Protocol Security, IPsec. Encryption and authentication are not separately priced, but included as part of the VPNS service. This diagram illustrates a VPNS network connecting an agency's headquarters to an agency site. VPNS provides secure, reliable transport of agency applications across a provider's high-speed, unified, multi-service, IP-enabled backbone infrastructure. VPNS provides secure tunnels between remote sites, which enable authorized users to securely access agency resources via an extranet, and enable remote users to securely access their files. Here are a few use cases for VPNS. Using VPNS, a remote user working from home can securely access an agency's internal secured private network. VPNS can connect any number of geographically separated offices, creating one cohesive private network. Personnel can use VPNS to send and receive data across disparate networks as if their computing devices were directly connected to the private network. For VPNS, there are a number of features associated with the service that can be ordered. The high availability feature provides load sharing, failover protection, and diverse access points to the service provider's point of presence. Load sharing is a feature that enables network traffic to be routed along different paths to increase network availability by reducing network congestion. Failover is a process whereby network traffic is automatically switched over to a redundant or standby network upon failure or some sort of abnormal termination of traffic. 
Diverse access is a feature that provides an extra route to the service provider's POP or point of presence if there is a network wire or cable failure. There is also an interworking services feature that gives an agency transparent VPNS access across disparate transport services. For example, it can provide the ability for an agency's wireless network service to interface and work with a contractor's Ethernet transport service in providing VPNS connectivity service. For the VPNS T3 and Ethernet port options, agencies can order burstable bandwidth Burstable bandwidth is a method of measuring bandwidth based on peak use. It allows an agency to subscribe to a bandwidth commitment that is less than the full bandwidth of the selected VPNS port. Therefore, usage can exceed a specific threshold for brief periods of time without the financial penalty of purchasing a higher committed rate, CIR, or commitment from a service provider. It is a flexible alternative to standard dedicated bandwidth. Scalable bandwidth is another option for Ethernet ports. Scalable bandwidth provides a committed bandwidth speed and allows for an increased capacity up to maximum bandwidth speed. For example, an agency may have a need for their bandwidth to be never less than 1 megabit per second, but they also have temporary anticipated requirements for bandwidth speeds up to 10 megabits. There are a number of Ethernet committed and scalable bandwidth options available on EIS. For example, at the low end, there is a 3 megabits commitment up to a 10 megabits scalable option. And at the high end, there is a 3 gigabits commitment up to a 10 gigabits scalable option. When an agency buys VPNS service, they are buying a technology that runs over a port. There are a variety of different port types available and a variety of port bandwidth speeds available. There are Ethernet ports, there are T1 and T3 ports, there are fiber optic ports, and ISDN ports available as standard service CLINs under EIS. Bandwidth speeds for VPNS under EIS range from 64 kilobits per second up to 40 gigabits per second based on the port type. When purchasing VPNS, there is normally a monthly recurring charge, MRC, per port. The port charge is based on the transport option selected and its speed. Listed are the standard ones on the EIS contract. As shown in the table, there are several standard CLINs for T1 and T3 ports, Ethernet ports, optical ports, and ISDN ports. For VPNS, there may also be usage charges on the bill when an agency selects an Ethernet bandwidth on-demand option. And for the T3 and Ethernet burstable option, there could be usage overage charges for any exceeded peak use thresholds. These usage charges are billed using the appropriate associated auto-sold CLIN. For the VPNS bandwidth on demand options, an agency will probably want to include the expedited provisioning option, CLIN VN40001 per port. This option, shown in the table, guarantees provisioning within 24 hours rather than the standard provisioning period. For this option, there will be an NRC for each time there is an order to increase or decrease bandwidth speed. For VPNS, there are also certain service options that combine or embed the port charge and the access charge into the price. For example, there are some satellite, T1 and T3, and various shared Ethernet options available where the port and access charge are combined in the priced CLIN. Having a separate access is more common and often preferred over an embedded access option. So the pricing structure for VPNS is the port charge MRC, the cost of which is dependent upon the data service and bandwidth speed selected. For example, ISDN at 64 kilobits per second or Ethernet at 1 gigabit per second. As just mentioned, there are a few specific options where access and the port charge are bundled, but with most options, access will be a separate cost outside of the VPNS service. There will also be usage charges associated with the bandwidth on-demand burstable option, BOD, and usage charges for any bandwidth overages incurred. The expedited provisioning charge will be an NRC. The high availability features, such as load sharing, failover protection, and diverse POP access will be an MRC. Together, these will provide the total charge for the service. 
It is also important to note that a contractor may offer a custom variation of VPNS to meet an agency's unique requirements. The customization could be identified through an ICB CLIN or a task order unique CLIN. These costs may also be a factor in determining the total cost of the service. The standard provisioning SLA for VPNS is 45 days. This diagram is an example of an agency implementing VPN service. The agency headquarters is using a 100 megabits per second Ethernet port, CLIN VN00015, which is a monthly recurring charge billed for the use of the port. The agency site has a 50 megabits per second port, CLIN VN00010 Ethernet port. The access charges would be separate and not included in the price of the VPNS. As shown in the example, each site has a separate access arrangement NRC and MRC. The CLINs for those are not shown in the diagram.